I'm on the line with us, uh, my old buddy John Perkins, formerly a chief economist at a major international consulting firm. Now he is an author, speaker, activist. John has written 11 books, including his latest Confessions of an Economic Hitman, third edition with 12 new chapters. JohnPerkins.org, spelled just like it sounds, is his website. Uh, J. Perkins Author is his Twitter handle. John, welcome back to the program. Tell us about what, well, first of all, before we get into what's new in the book, um, for people who might not be familiar with you and your work, you want to give us a, a, a brief summary of conf the original Confessions of an Economic Hitman. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. It's great to be with you again. You know, I, well, the, the, the original described my own activities as an economic hitman. As you mentioned, I was actually chief economist at a major consulting firm. Um, but my job, in my staff's job, was to identify countries with corporations, with, with resources that our corporations covenant, like oil or other minerals, and then make huge loans to that country through the World Bank or one of its sister organizations. However, the money never actually went to the country. Instead, it went to our own corporations to build big infrastructure projects in that country, like power plants and industrial parks, uh, high highways and ports, things that helped a few wealthy families who benefited from the improved infrastructure because they owned the industries and other businesses. But the majority of people actually suffered because money was diverted from education, health care, and other social services to pay the interest on the loans. In the end, the country couldn't repay the loans. So we'd go back, usually in the guise of the IMF, and say, hey, since you can't pay your loans, uh, give us your collateral, your, your oil, or whatever. Give them to our corporations real cheap, without any environmental or social regulations, or very few. And in, in that way, we, we really created a, a, a global empire. These countries were became servitudes, became servants to us through debt. You know, you mentioned the slave ships. Yes, that was a terrible form of slavery. The more modern form, in many cases, and what I was practicing, was a form of debt slavery, the debt trap slavery. And we were very successful at doing this around the world. And th this book actually gets into the next. The, the, the new wave of economic hitmen, which is the Chinese economic hitmen, who are following basically the same strategy, but they've learned from our mistakes and our successes and are outmaneuvering us on every continent. So give us some, it's, it's an amazing story, and your crisis of conscience and, and move out of that field and into being a whistleblower essentially is, uh, you know, an important story that everybody should know. Um, but now you're watching... Chinese, you know, China is now the second largest economy in the world, and arguably this year or next will ac actually surpass the United States. They're still growing at around four and a half, five percent. We're growing at, you know, around one percent. Um, so, uh, there, what differentiates and 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 where are the similarities between the economic hitmen who are operating out of China and, and people like yourself uh, back in the day, and and the Americans who are still, you know, economic hitmen. Well, I think, first of all, the similarities are, are pretty much what I described. They use the same approach, but putting countries deep into debt and then going back and collecting their collateral, uh, building big, big projects. But it's, it's now, if, if I may interrupt you, John, in, in your book, I, uh, you know, years ago, when, when your, the first edition of this book came out, um, you talked about sometimes even using blackmail against politicians in third world countries. Um, using bribery, uh, not that you were specifically yourself doing it, but that this was something that economic hitmen did, um, using threats against family, um, using dangling the, the potential for political power. Is that the sort of thing you're talking about that the Chinese are doing? Well, yes, I talk in my book about how we, we had, the, the leaders of countries knew that if they didn't accept these loans, the carrot, if they did accept the loans, they would, their families would, would prosper. If they didn't accept over loans, people we call the jackals would come in. So we had on one hand, we had the money, and then the other hand, the gun. <laughs> Basically, I didn't carry a gun, but I knew there were people behind me who did. And, you know, the, the United States has a long history, as, as you well know, Tom, of overthrowing governments or assassinating their leaders. We've admitted to such things with Allende in Chile and Arbenz in Guatemala and, and, and many others. Uh, as far as we know, China hasn't done that. They haven't overthrown governments or, or assassinated leaders, with the possible exception of in their own territory, what they consider to be what they consider <laughs> to be part of their historical region, you know, Tibet and Taiwan and Hong Kong and that area. But but they do practice all the debt trap economics that, that I mentioned earlier. 
However, they, they have a, a certain benefit in that they have an amazing marketing tool, and that is their story. They can tell the world that for about 30 years, they had economic growth of around 10% a year. Yes, it's decreased, but they had 10% economic growth for 30 years, and they brought more than 700 million people out of poverty, more than the rest of the world combined. combined. That's a pretty amazing story. No other country has that. And they also tell these countries that they're connecting them with the new Silk Road, the Belt and Road Initiative, which means that countries like Ecuador or any country in South America or Africa uh, is being told that, that, that China is going to help them build ports and airports and things that will connect them with the whole world, not just with their neighbors or not just a, bio- a bilateral agreement between China and this country as we did between the United States and the countries that we worked in. So they have, a, they have a very good story to tell, and it's particularly attractive to countries in Africa and parts of Latin America and the Middle East and Asia that are used to the colonialism of, of Europe and the United States throughout history. So what, what do we do with this knowledge, this information? Well, I, I think, Tom, and the main theme of this new book, The Confessions of an Economic Hitman, third edition, and the subtitles, incidentally, are, are the China's economic hitman strategy and ways to stop the global takeover. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and the global takeover is not just China's global takeover. It's the global takeover of the economic hitman strategy. Mm-hmm. I think it's fair to say, and this is the main theme of the book, that China and the United States are locked in a race and a competition to dominate the world economically. And it's a race to disaster. You know, it's taken us to the precipice. We've created what, what many economists and I refer to as a death economy, a degenerative system that is consuming and polluting itself into extinction. In the short term, it's, it's, it's using up, depleting all the resources that it needs for the long term. Mm-hmm. It is actually, too, the cause of climate change species, extinctions, income inequality. So many of the crises we face, we've got to end it and create a life economy, an economic system that's regenerative, that cleans up pollution, pays people to clean up pollution, pays people uh, to rejuvenate destroyed environments, to recycle, to create more technologies like solar and wind and things we haven't even conceived of yet that don't ravage the earth. So the main message here is that, you know, there may be a race here, but there are no winners on a dead planet. And that's where this race is taking us. So we must turn this, this around. Yeah, very, very well said. John Perkins is the author, formerly a chief economist with a major national inter- international consulting firm, uh, now an author, speaker, activist, author of more than 11 books. Uh, mm-hmm. His most recent, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, third edition, ch- complete with 13 new chapters. JohnPerkins.org, the website. John, thanks for dropping by. My pleasure, Tom. Thanks for all you do. I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, it's an honor. Uh, Great talking with you, and I wish you the very best on the book. We'll be right back.